Hello and uh, welcome to, well, there's quite a few videos going up, myself and uh, Llewellyn Bren, as we explore St. Genid Common, which is the site of the astronomical star map, uh, as mentioned in the Mabinogi, where King Arthur played his famous game of Gullbull. Uh This is the spot. <laughs> this is where you can work out the, uh, the astronomical knowledge of our ancients, the details the Mabinogi, how they could tell you where the planets were, how they moved, all the way back to creation, absolutely crucial. And we filmed this uh, last September, September 21, at the end of the summer, uh, full of excitement and enthusiasm. And this was before uh, the bombshell dropped that uh, this is all going to become a wind farm. It's Butte Energy. Contact details are in the description. It was a very, very short consultation period of one week. So we're still trying to get some protection up there because it's not just a particular sites. The whole thing is the alignments, as you'll see in these videos. It, it's how much we haven't worked out is as crucial as what we have. And we desperately need some national recognition for this. So it's all going to go because it's not just the turbines themselves. It's all the access roads, the massive concrete platforms for the cranes, the quarry in the hardcore. Uh, once it's done, it's done. It's ruined forever. And this site's been here thousands of years. And the wind farm will last 20 years before it gets abandoned and landfilled. So it's not helping anybody uh, save the planet either. It's just a, a money grab con. <laughs> I shouldn't use words like that. Uh, but what can you say? All right. So please get involved and see what we can do to try and protect this. And hope you enjoy the videos. In the meantime, uh, with a sad tinge to them. Um, there's a car there, that's not marked on any order of survey map Yeah, no, we see a few of these, we do look like a potential burial mound, but uh, very hard to tell, isn't it really, how pretty archaeology, but uh, there's a classical look of one. And we could just be a pile of stones that the mud's covered over year after years and years and years. But they do seem strategically placed, obviously you've got spoil there for money, probably put the, the pole up. So I think we're looking at a burial mound that's uh, just been worn down over the years. Because uh, burial mounds are later than tumuluses, aren't they? So. so what we've got here is um, We'll have one stone over there, one stone over there. Um, it's hard to see them through the bracken, but it'll form a triangular shape. And basically that is triangulation to, um, to map planets. And that is the kind of thing that uh, these boys are up to. Where Ptolemy, the great Roman astrologer, claims to have found these planets in uh, 135 AD. A little bit behind, I would say. <laughs> That's just a comment, but... Um, We've got a star map that NASA would have loved in 1945 and Ptolemy's writing about it in 135. So I'm thinking Ptolemy's the first boy that put it down in Latin. And that's the only thing I'm giving him credit for. Maybe next time. Yeah, you can start to see the details appearing now. I would suggest you got the animal would have been there with the legs and the rider. I got another one on the face. Can you see it there? So this is the head of the horse here, look. There's yeah. the, the tail, the back, the rider's there, the legs. Oh, I see. It's starting to come up, it's starting to appear now. You have to look at these things for a while sometimes. What we got here is, uh, I can't do a run of water. We've got a head here, a body. It's, I believe it's a woman figure. My mate, uh, Good friend uh, Scott Smith, you noticed by here and on the photo it comes out, there's a bird of prey landed on her, on her arm. But the little significant thing is if you look by here, you can actually see the horse's head. And she's, it's even the right height for the horse to be in proportion to the size of the, the person that's on there. But there you can definitely see the horse's head is carved into it. There's no getting around it, that is a horse's head. You look on the photo, it's even got the eyes and the ears. Oh yes, I can see it now. It, it, it yes. jumps out to you. It's one of these things that has to jump out to you. I, I thought my mate, I didn't know what he was on about, when my mate Scott said, I, I see 
a flying eagle landing down. I really yeah, didn't. And then one hunting, day yeah. when I looked at the photo, it just jumped out at me. And it's a hunting bird. She's got her arm up and it's a hunting bird. And the other side oh of her goodness, is a horse. Oh my goodness, yeah, it starts to come out. Oh my goodness. It's yeah. been beautiful. Yeah, there's the head of the horse. Yeah. There's the ears, the head, the whole horse is there. Yeah. So this is saying could be the a dress or something like that? Well, I just think the shape, it looks the like shape, a woman. Yeah, it looks like a woman on a horse. Like there's a knees and a, some sort of dress and there's She's the head up there. The side of that, and that's the hunting bird up there, yeah? Yeah, and coming back down to her arm. Um, yeah, fair play. It was my mate Scott uh, Smith who uh, who uh, discovered that. Well, hopefully he can't I, uh, this I one. I found the horse and then my, uh, my, Fantastic. my, two, my two daughters found the, the person. But it, it really doesn't jump out until you take the photos. It's, it's, it's a strange sort of thing. Because mm. you think, am I mad? And then possibly yes, but no, it's definitely there. And other people see other things. So yeah, and it really ties in with the tradition of um, the Britons, the horse pulled the sun, the hunting bird, everything that uh, supposed to be Norman is written here as being British. Yeah. <laughs> There's a significant tumulus. Um, if it is a woman, it shows that uh, the ancient Britons had more rights for women than the, yep. the British government did in 1940 <laughs> something. This is what you want. The sun's slightly lower, the water's drying off, that's so you can see things then. So you can see here's the rider, you got the it. back of the horse, the leg, the head of the horse. Go along with the Wilson and Blackett theory there. The Abba Valley being an, a valley that has an end. It's almost like it's a status or a symbolic status of uh, the journey of life, where eventually you go through a, a, stereo, a, a various set of stages, eventually come into the judge, which is the end of the valley and obviously the end of life. So I think the, a lot of the symbolism on the valley represents life as you go through it. And this is just part of the funeral process. That is my uh, personal opinion. Um, <laughs> Ian Tog uh, described some of these rocks as uh, boulder rocks. And they're suspo uh, supported by other smaller boulders underneath. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is quite a good example. Yeah, it's definitely. There's another example, definitely over the the way of that. You've got all kinds of facets of. Uh, Neolithic and Mesolithic graves, all in the one site. Right, you want one more before we get back to the car? I was there. Uh, people love to have a look at these here. Whoa. <laughs> people also like watching me fall over, which seems to happen in most videos. So I'm got time to study this one today. Yeah, there's a nice uh, dropping on the top. Yeah, there's sort of cracks and things. It's difficult to see obvious markings, isn't it? Ah, oh, this one. Oh, this one. Yeah, here we go. I suggest you have a look at this one with some uh, water and stuff next time. That looks like a bull to me. Looks like a cow there. Stick to this, shouldn't I? Yeah. So, it looks like a bull or a ram, I would say. Let's have a look. Is that lichen? No, that's carved in there. That is actually a dent. That is a dent. Yeah. So that's that's been put in there. Um, this stuff. Trying so to get my. It's just great devices until it's sunny and then. Nope. I can't get. I can't see my phone. Should I keep my shadow out of shot? Ah, get it! You got me again. I found. I don't know how old this ditch is. There seems to be a lot of ditches between between these uh, places. I don't know if this is a modern ditch. Ah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. Britain's Hidden History Group has so much more going on on our YouTube channel. When you're watching now, there's a live stream, 8 o'clock UK time every Sunday. We speak to people like Wilson and Blackett. We print their old books and help produce new ones. We go researching to the tops of mountains all the way down to the bottoms of caves. Busily recording the books, you can listen to them as well and looking at mysteries and working out what we're not being taught in schools and preserving it because the physical and written evidence is rapidly disappearing. You can also find out how to read ancient writing and hieroglyphs using the Welsh language. It's amazing. 
to the Facebook group where this is being discussed. Along with the website, you can buy the books and help us. Also, as you can see, there's now a Patreon page where just a few pounds a month will make all the difference in trying to keep the project going and preserve this history for future generations and also to find out for ourselves what is going on, what is Britain's hidden history. So until the next time, Hedduch!